You're listening to Almond in the Morning, Common Sense Radio. Bunch of drunks. Ooh, I'm a rebel just for kicks. Let me kick it like it's 810. I love this story about Colin Kaepernick being pretty much as dumb as he looks. And, and I, I screenshotted this too because I'm really in the habit now of screenshotting the story lists when you go to a news page and you see all the different news stories and they're all about Colin Kaepernick really shows Donald Trump as he donates $50,000 to Meals on Wheels. Uh, Congrats. (laughs) Meals on Wheels quite possibly that story one of the biggest fake news stories of the past couple of weeks after the stories about President Trump's skinny budget which of course does not cut funding for Meals on Wheels, and it's all related to the community block grants, development block grants, and occasionally a CDBG might give like a pittance to Meals on Wheels just to keep themselves legit, because really it's just a crony capitalist thing, but it's really coming from the government. But Meals on Wheels, you go to the, even if you go to the website, Meals on Wheels doesn't even talk about how it depends on federal funding. It actually is the result of the Older Americans Act, which has not been touched by the skinny budget proposal and by private funding so colin kaepernick is not only a fool he's 50 grand poorer and the media keeps on promoting this meals on wheels fake news story it's unbelievable so i screenshotted the entire list of those folks hey kennedy is right with us now. welcome back. Open arms. hello it just goes to show you how one bit of fake news if no one reads a story debunking it, they'll just keep on with the same old narrative. How you doing, Kennedy? I'm doing good. How are you? I am fine, thank you. Just really loving your show, loving you on Outnumbered, and uh, thanks so much for taking the time to, to be with us. So what do you think is going to happen with this uh, health care deal? I don't think the vote's going to happen today. And uh, I, I think that's pretty obvious because they have too many no's. And, you know, all the people that we've spoken to, our uh, former producers on the Hill, to people in Congress, they're not happy with it. And, you know, there are a lot of, I, I talked to Tom McClintock last night, who's a conservative from California, and, you know, he's one of those people that's really trying to get on board with it and trying to convince himself that the tax credits aren't subsidies, but that's the big sticking point. And, you know, it puts in place a framework that is essentially Obamacare. Yeah, and so uh, right now it looks like they have some kind of out because it looks like this the Senate's going to tackle something. They're going to go back and start to readjust a few things in there. But is there any way to change what is currently formulated in the Ryan plan to make it palatable to the likes of a Rand Paul or a Senator Lee or something like that? Yeah, I mean, really get rid of it. You know, get rid of the mandates. Don't call them something else. Don't call it, uh, you know, a continuous coverage penalty because it's the individual mandate. It's a, it's a 30% increase if for some reason you don't have health insurance for just over two months. And, you know, there are a lot of people who uh, get in pretty dire situations who don't qualify for Medicaid and certainly won't now. And, you know, they're going to see their premiums rise by 30%. And they're going to have to pay that to the insurance companies, which are just getting a handout from the government. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I just think the whole idea, I'm, I'm confused a little bit because I'm surprised that President Trump is so into this because really he campaigned on repeal and replace. And yeah. I'm, I'm a little surprised he's as, as much of a fan of this. And there's got to be some strategy that he's invoking here. And, and I think in my back of my mind, I'm thinking uh, he knows it's going to fail. So I'm wondering if that's really his... That, that that he doesn't think that's such a bad thing anyway to let just Obamacare live itself out and be a nightmare. No, I mean, he, he said that, and, you know, and that would actually be um, a worse scenario for Democrats if Obamacare just failed in the 
present state that it's in. Um, you know, and, and of course, the worry is uh, that we move into a single payer system, and I, I think there would be a revolution in a lot of the states where you saw the president get elected because that's not what people want. And all you have to do is, you know, talk to your son, talk to people who are trying to get health care in the VA. That's a single payer system. And, you know, trying to change an entitlement uh, takes so much time and effort and energy. And, you know, you really have to, and I've compared it to a remodel versus a teardown. Because uh, this, you know, it, the legislation, Obamacare itself is a teardown. It's not a remodel, and that's what they're trying to do. You know, it's like they've got a bad foundation and a termite-ridden structure, and, and they're trying to go in and slap some uh some two befores and make it as good as new, and it's it's not. It's the same old socialism. Yeah. Right, exactly. All right, so uh, real quickly, I guess, too, because I know we're running out of time here, too, but but the your takeaway from the London attack, I realize we don't have all the information to draw any conclusions, but what was your take on it so far? Um, it, it's really interesting because I was talking to Buck Sexton last night about it, and he made a really good point. Like, even people that have traditionally thought to have been lone wolves are actually being directed um, more personally than they had previously thought. So a lot of people, uh, the going wisdom was that they were self-radicalized but and, you know, just went on certain websites and found recipes to build bombs and how to kill people quickly with just a car and a knife. And uh, the truth of the matter is that they're actually finding that there was much more personal direction for people. Wow. Yeah, I mean it's 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 scary. I'm not quite sure this one uh, is is really necessarily tied to immigration policy, whatever. But the bottom line is, there's the the radicals are firmly planted in nearly all of Europe, and it's really scary. And and especially now, since you've got a, a mixture of the radicals, and then you have unarmed police officers. So it's like, oh, great, yeah. you know, <laughs> unbelievable. All right, yeah, Kennedy. How are they supposed to defend themselves? Thanks so much, Jamie. Good hey, to talk to you, at Kennedy Nation, and of course weeknights at seven o'clock our time. Thanks so much. Great talking to you. You can talk to you. Thanks, man. All right.